Echo TV is a co-production of Minnesota's Emergency and Community Health Outreach Collaborative of Health, Safety, Ethnic, and Nonprofit Agencies, and TPT's Minnesota Channel. Hello and welcome to ECHO, which stands for Emergency and Community Health Outreach. I'm your host, Lillian McDonald. ECHO is typically a program designed to provide health and safety information translated to ethnic audiences. But our topic tonight is so unique, we decided to also record a segment in English. Our topic tonight is called, What is SNS? Which stands for Strategic National Stockpile, otherwise known as the Mass Dispensing of medicine. We'll have a guest, but first we'd like you to learn a little bit more about the subject. I'm your host, Lily McDonald. We hope you enjoy the ECHO program. Watch this about SNS and we'll come back with some questions and answers. It happens to everybody from time to time. You or someone in your family will get a cough or a stuffy nose or a fever, and then other people start getting it. It starts to spread through your home and your community. Most of the time, the diseases people get from each other are not a big deal. You feel bad for a little while, and then you get better. But sometimes it's more serious than that. A really dangerous disease may take hold in your community and start moving quickly from person to person. If that happens, it can make a lot of people sick all at once. That's called an epidemic or an outbreak. Sometimes outbreaks just happen for no particular reason. But it's also possible for somebody to start an outbreak on purpose. That's called bioterrorism. It's not likely but people have tried it before, and they could try it again. They tried it three years ago here in the United States with a disease called anthrax. But however it happens, if enough people get sick, you could have trouble getting the medicine you need to fight the disease. You might not be able to get the shots or pills you need from the usual place, your doctor, your clinic, or your community drugstore. It would be very, very unusual to have an outbreak that big, but it could happen and we need to be ready for it if it ever does. Public health people all across the country have already been working to do that. We now have large supplies of medicine stored all over the United States, and we can get it whenever it's needed, in less than a day. If we ever need it here in Minnesota, there will be a special place in your community where you can get the medicine. So stay tuned to your local public TV station for directions. It may take a few days or even longer before we public health workers can give you your medicine. And when the time comes to get your medicine, you may have to wait in line. If there's a very big outbreak going on, we will need to give out medicine to a lot of people. If you do need to wait, be patient. Don't worry about getting your medicine. There will be plenty of time and plenty of medicine for everybody. And it will be free. You won't have to pay for it. Don't go looking for an unofficial place to get your drugs. The drugs you get that way may not work, and they could even be dangerous. While you're waiting for your medicine, stay home as much as possible. That way, you and your family will be less likely to get a dangerous disease. There are also things you can do to be ready before you and your family go to get your medicine. You'll be asked some questions about your health, so make sure you can answer them for yourself and for everyone in your family. For example, do you have any health problems right now? Are you taking any medicine? Have you had any health problems in the past? Have you ever been told that you're allergic to any kind of medicine? How old are your children, and how much do they weigh? If you can, you might want to write this information down and include it in an emergency plan for your family so everybody knows what to do and where to go for help in an emergency. You'll be told all about the medicine you'll be taking when you come in to get it. If they give you pills, be sure to take them exactly as you're told to take them. If you're an adult, you can also pick up pills for up to 10 other people who live with you. No one will be turned away when you come to get your medicine, and we'll make every effort to serve you in your own language. We hope that we'll never have a very big dangerous disease outbreak, and that we'll never have to give out medicine in this special way. But if we ever do, we want to be ready, and we want you to be ready. That way, we can save lives and help people keep from getting sick, 
in your family, and in your community. Welcome back. You're watching ECHO, which stands for Emergency and Community Health Outreach. I'm your host, Lillian McDonald. We're talking about SNS, Strategic National Stockpile. And with us to discuss this topic is Dr. Harry Hall, epidemiologist from the Minnesota Department of Health. Doctor, thank you for joining us. Thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity. We're happy to have you. This is a very big topic for public health agencies and the public across Minnesota and the country. So we uh, enjoy your responses to our questions tonight. Um, you've got a lot of experience in this. Tell us just a little bit about your experience in covering uh, outbreaks that we require mass dispensing of medicine. Well, my background as an epidemiologist, uh, my training is to look for outbreaks of d disease. And when they occur, we investigate them, determine the cause, and then come up ways come up with ways of controlling the outbreak. And you've probably seen me in the past on television talking about these disease outbreaks and how you can protect yourself. And that's the same kind of thing I'm going to be doing if we have one of these terrible events in the future. Well, we've seen you in the, uh, on television talking about these things, but what is this SNS stuff, Strategic National Stockpile, exactly supposed to do? Well, strategic National Stockpile is really, it's a government plan, a partnership between the federal government and the state government and local governments to get medicine to everybody in a very short period of time if there's an emergency. You know, we call these clinics the mass dispensing clinics and our goal is to be able to get medicine or vaccine to everybody in the state in 48 hours if it's necessary. And you're not talking about just pills, but you're also talking about possibly inoculations. Right. Which is going to bring a lot of challenges, I would imagine, if people are on different medicines. Or how, how can you push people through so fast? What's well, the plan? Well, we'll have sc screeners who see you as you come through, and they'll ask you questions. And it's important that you be prepared to answer those questions. You should know what medicines you're on, know if you have allergies, know if your children have allergies or are on medicines, and know just about what the weight of your kids are. How, how many of these strategic national stockpiles are stockpiled across the country? Well, there's at least eight, but there may be more at this point in time. We actually are not told the location of them, but again, they're around the country, and if there's an emergency, they'll be able to get here in Minnesota in a matter of hours, and there will be enough medicine for everybody. Okay. Um, what kind of emergencies would cause us to break out SNS packs or mass dispensing clinics across the country? Well, in general, there's two kinds. The first is if somebody, uh, perhaps a terrorist, released uh, germs or chemicals into the environment with a goal of making a lot of people sick and perhaps killing a lot of people. Um, the other would be if there's a, an outbreak of a new disease uh, that was killing a lot of people. Um, you might think back to 2003 when we had the SARS outbreak. It might be like that, but it'd be something that would be affecting many more people and spreading much more rapidly than SARS did. We've actually had a chance to, to try some of these activities on for size, this mass dispensing arrangements. Uh, uh, by passing out uh, medications. Can you give us some examples? Well, here within Minnesota, um, we had the Mankato meningitis outbreak, um, I guess about 10 years ago, and we were able to vaccinate 30,000 people in a very short period of time, a matter of, um, I believe, two days. Um, before I came to Minnesota, I was at the World Health Organization, and we were working to uh, eradicate polio from the entire world. And there, we set up clinics to immunize all children less than five years of age in a particular country um, in a, a very short period of time. The best we ever did was uh, immunizing 140 million children in India in one day. So we know it can be done. And the mass dispensing clinics here would be somewhat like that, but instead of just vaccinating small children, we'd be vaccinating people of all ages. One of the things that's interesting is that you're not concerned about who comes. You just want to make sure everybody comes. Right. And in working with some of our ethnic audiences, one of the questions uh, that I've heard is, what if I'm illegal? Or, or what if I'm, you know, not, you're, are you going to report me if I'm not supposed to be here? And, and, and really, I, I've heard that anybody can come and get oh, medication. Absolutely. Our objective is to get people through the clinic as fast as possible. Those kinds of questions will not be asked. And it's important to re for us um, 
to realize, or it's important for us to understand that if somebody from a minority community has a disease that, and they can spread it to others, that they pose a potential danger. And so we want to make sure that everybody that needs to get treated is treated because that's what it takes to stop the outbreak. What do I do after I get the medication? I'm to come home then after an SNS? I've, I've been delivered mass dispensing medicines. Then what happens? Well, you will be given instructions on what to do. Uh, you usually go home, uh, take the medicines according to the directions that you're given. If you're sick, you should go to the doctor or to, to the hospital to be cared for. The, the important thing to remember is that you've got to be prepared to take care of your family during an outbreak. Mm -hmm. We may ask people to stay home for several days, so you should have an emergency supply at your home. You should have extra food, extra water, blankets, um, a first aid kit to make sure you can take care of your family. Certainly in an emergency if you get sick you have gotta go to the doctor. And then the other thing is you've gotta pay attention to the news, the television, radio, internet, newspapers, echo. Um, they're gonna all have information on what's happening and you've gotta be prepared to listen, understand, and take the actions that are necessary to protect you and your family. You're asking people to be patient because if the news comes out, there's a mass outbreak of a disease, pay attention to the news and to ECHO and other programs to find out what you're supposed to do, report to a mass dispensing clinic. You're asking them to, to be patient. How important is that? Oh, it's terribly important. I, mean, I think that one of the challenges is that everybody is going to be afraid in times like this. You and your family may be afraid, I'll even be afraid, but that's normal. What you have to do is stay calm, listen to the instructions, follow the instructions. We'll be telling you what you need to do to protect you and your family. Which does lend itself to the importance of preparedness in your home and the reason why we bring programs like this and work together to do as much advanced work as possible because when you're in a situation and you can feel that sense of urgency, it's hard to think about preparedness. Right. Well, it's, now is the time to be prepared. It's hard to get prepared in the middle of an emergency. A lot of folks might be tempted to just run off to their own clinic instead of this mass dispensing site. Is that going to work? Well, um, we're bringing in special medicines that your doctor may or may not have. Um, and we are setting up these clinics so that they will have the, um, will have the medicine. There may be long lines. You may have to wait, a time, wait some time, but you will be able to get it. The other thing about going to your doctor is that your doctor is going to be busy taking care of sick people and will not have, really have time to deal with this dispensing of medicine. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about that long line situation. You mentioned screening earlier. People are going to be screened. You might be dealing with foreign languages, so you're going to have to deal with that. There might be some mental health issues, too. Um, what are some of the the possibilities that, or things that are going to be going on in this mass dispensing clinic that, that we might sort of be aware of before we get there if we ever have to. Well, again, I think the biggest mental health problem is that people will be afraid and that might lead to panic. These kinds of situations are going to be very, very stressful. And so we will be uh, working uh, within the clinics. You know, if somebody's really got a problem, we'll be able to take them in uh, a separate room and deal with them separately. Is there enough medication to oh, take care of Absolutely. Everyone? There is medicine stored all around the country. It can be within the state in a matter of hours, and there will be enough. Uh, for smallpox, for example, there are more than 300 million doses in the country. Already here, there will be enough vaccine for everyone. Okay, well that's good news. Then let's tell people exactly what they should have in their preparedness kit so they know what to bring them to the mass dispensing clinic if they have to. What should it be? Well, at home, you should have food, water, heat, um, first aid kits. As far as coming to the clinic is concerned, you should know what your medicines are. Bring a list, or if you can't bring a list, bring the bottles so that the uh, nurses can understand what's there. Um, you should be aware of your allergies, and then you should bring a list of everybody in your family. And for your children, there are approximate weights if you know it. And I understand if you are too sick to get to the mass dispensing clinic, a member of a family can help for so many people. How many is that? 
I think it's up to 10. Right, up to 10 people. Okay. And, but if you are sick, you should go to the hospital. Right. The mass clinics will, are not the place to go if you're sick. And send a member of the family who is healthy to the clinic then. Right. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Hall. I really appreciate your time and your answers to our questions today. Thank you. We uh, have uh, three key messages we'd like you to remember about this program and this topic. If there's ever really a big disease outbreak, we should keep in mind these three things. Number one, don't worry, there'll be enough medicine for everybody. Number two, stay home. Be patient, wait for directions. And number three, be ready to answer questions about your family's health, including the medications they might be taking or any special needs they might have. We thank Dr. Hull again for joining us from the Minnesota Department of Health. I'm Lillian McDonald, your host for ECHO. If you'd like more information about ECHO, who we are and what we do, or this topic, please go to www.echominnesota.org or give us a call at 651-215-0711. Again, I'm Lillian McDonald, your host for ECHO. Thank you very much for watching. Echo TV is a co-production of Minnesota's Emergency and Community Health Outreach Collaborative of Health, Safety, Ethnic and Nonprofit Agencies and TPT's Minnesota Channel.